it's another edition of HiddenIncaTours.com and today we're exploring Easter Island. And this is my forthcoming book, Easter Island, The Secret Knowledge. So Easter Island is a very small place. It's located about 2,000 miles off the coast of Chile and is 5 miles by 7 miles by 10 miles in size with a population of about 6,000 to 7,000 people. Now this is a series, I'm going to do five or six videos from our recent trip to Easter Island and this is the Orongo Crater. You can see it's a volcanic crater and it's quite massive and it has Totora reed growing in the center. Totora reed is also found on the coast of Peru and also in Lake Titicaca. The entire island is a series of volcanoes, very ancient. And this location is also at Arango. This is where the Birdman competition was held in times prior to the arrival of Europeans in the early 18th century. And these little islands offshore are where the native people, it was a man's tradition to swim to the far island there and collect an egg and if he was successful in making it back without being eaten by sharks then he became the king or chief of the island for a year. So these are the quite simple stone, basalt stone houses that um, were where the birdmen competition people would live. But then there are some odd artifacts such as this piece of stone which looks like it was shaped by some kind of sophisticated tool. And that is why Easter Island or Rapa Nui or Tepito Te Otehenawa is quite a fascinating place because we're going to be seeing examples of lost ancient high technology here. But first I wanted to show you again the rather simple houses that were constructed of slabs of basalt like this one you can see simply broken slabs were stacked on top of one another in an orderly fashion all near the rim of this crater. There are some more of the houses. And again, another inspection as we go past my beautiful wife Irene of the simple slab construction that we see at Orongo. So it's probably a later period of construction, just prior to the arrival of the Europeans, as I said. The first European to arrive was Rogovine, who's a Dutch explorer, and he's the one who named the island Easter Island because he landed there on Easter Sunday. And then we have some relatively simple temple circular complexes here, constructed probably out of older buildings. And now this is the small town on the island. There's only one. And we're driving to a different location. And this is Vinapu. So we have to go past the airport. And this is the location of Vinapu, right on the coast, and quite a complex area because it has different types of construction, all out of stone. So as we walk along, we're looking at some rather large blocks of basalt, uh, not well fitted together here, but as we move closer to the left, you see they do fit together quite tightly. And these weigh one ton or more, but then the stone quality reduces. But this is the phenomenal wall at Vinapu that's partially destroyed. And it is similar to construction that we see uh, in the highlands of Peru and to some degree also in places like Egypt. You see super tight fitting stone. Uh, very different from most of the construction we see on the island. There, of course, is one of the famous heads, of which there are 950. But as you're going to see, 
This is very atypical construction on Easter Island and hints that an older civilization was once there, did this construction, then the island was hit by a massive cataclysm which damaged part of the wall. And again, this is evidenced here. You see rather crude construction technique in comparison to the beautiful but damaged technique used at the Vinapu wall. And as we walk around to the side, again very crude construction in front and superior construction in behind. And again there's the superior construction. In behind we have some fallen Moai statues and then slabs that look like they were thrown from their original position. And here too, a small wall section of very big slabs of stone. Clearly these have, it's either been damaged or reassembled. And then much rougher work on the left hand side. Those two large ones are quite impressive. And now we're walking up to one of the Pukau, um, so-called hats, or more probably that is a top knot. That is what the uh, royal people's hair looked like. They would tie their hair up into a top knot, and they're all red, which could indicate that these people actually had red hair, which of course is not uh, what Polynesians look like. But what we're seeing as we go through this video and others in the series is that there appear to have been two different types of construction. The first one superior and the second inferior. And so what I'm believing and others believe is that the Polynesians arrived on Easter Island about 1,000 years ago and they found the remains of a more advanced technological civilization Possibly there, there were some people still living there from the earlier time period. And when Rogovin landed on Easter Island, uh, what was recorded in his log book was that they saw tall people, they saw short people, they saw black-haired people, they saw red-haired people, they even saw blonde-haired people. As well, they saw light-skinned people and they saw dark-skinned people. So here what you're looking at is a rebuilt wall, probably done during the Polynesian time period. Some of the stones are quite large, others very small. And that's in stark contrast to the Vinapu wall you saw earlier. There again is one of the Pukau top knots. And now we're walking up to another one of the fallen Moai. And they seem to be from two time periods as well. The small ones are like this. That's, of course, simply the head but there are much larger ones with so-called aquiline noses. So again, possible reconstruction of a somewhat megalithic wall. And now we're going to look at inferior construction. And again, one of the fallen heads, each one of the Moai, the 950 of them, were originally full figures with uh, one or two being on the order of 35 feet tall or more. There's also one Moai in the quarry, unfinished, which uh, would weigh 180 tons if it was ever completed. And a view of the quarry will come up in a future video in this series. Here again are some massive slabs that look like they've been recycled during the Polynesian time frame. And now we're going back to the Vinapu megalithic wall, but this is the back side where you're having a look at some fallen smaller moai. So these were ones probably made during the Polynesian time frame, whereas the much larger ones were likely made thousands of years prior to the arrival of the Polynesians. And here we see one of the Pukaus, which has been turned into a water vessel. So again, recycling.
And sadly, the population of Easter Island dropped after contact with Europeans from possibly 10,000 plus people down to a population of only 111. So the population now is a mix of Polynesian and European heritage in general. And as we drive past the airport, which you have to do to get anywhere, this is the end of the first in a series of five or six videos about mysterious aspects of Rapa Nui or Easter Island. And thank you so much for watching. There again, a section of a megalithic wall with rougher work on top of it. So these are related books and videos at Amazon.com. Easter Island Guide for Inquisitive Minds. It's an ebook as well as paperback. And the one I'm working on now, Easter Island The Secret Knowledge from our 2018 trip. And on Amazon Prime, my one hour video, The Lost History of Easter Island at Amazon Prime. And these are upcoming tours for 2019 and 2020. We're doing a tour of Jordan in April of 2019. And then right after that, we're doing a Lebanon extension tour. The two countries are very close to one another. And in June, the Inti Raimi Inca Celebration of the Sun, which is almost full. And August, the Elongated Skulls Tour of Peru. Quite a bit of room on that tour still, if you're interested in Elongated Skulls. And Turkey in September of 2019. We'll also be doing India in January of 2020.